Hey guys, this video is going to be an extension to my previous review of the Vivo Active 4. If you haven't watched that, I definitely recommend checking that out first because I won't be covering all the topics I covered in the previous video. This video is more about correcting some of the little mistakes I made in the first video and also covering some of the latest software updates. I'll leave a link in the description to my full review of the Vivo Active 4S. So there have been a lot of software updates before the Vivo Active 4 and something that I really appreciate about our Garmin is that they actually changed they actually show the change log in their forums. So I'll leave a link in the descri description down below to the actual forums and then you can see all the different changes they've done. But all in all, let's see if the actual software changes have improved and made this smartwatch a lot better, more stable, and of course, more accurate in terms of its sensors. So before we go into the technical details of this update, I wanna share my confession that I've actually been using the Vivo Smart 4 the slim fitness tracker on my wrist for most of the time. And the reason why was that it was something I really liked about it was the fact that it was super slim. So the Vivo Smart 4 was my daily driver. I've been using that for most of my main personal use. Obviously I've been doing reviews of other fitness trackers, but recently I switched back to the Vivo Active 4S. And one thing that was really annoying me with the Vivo Smart 4 was that it only tracked four hours of my pulse ox. And I have a condition called sleep apnea. So it's very annoying to only have four hours of data being able to correlate my sleep with the four hours of SpO2 tracking. So having this on the Vivo Active 4S is really nice. And this is the main reason why I switched. Unfortunately, it took me a while to get used to it. This is a lot bigger than the Vivo Smart 4, which was super slim, super slim. This is almost double the weight. But the good thing about this is that if you're new to smartwatches or fitness trackers, I really do think, and before you return it, before you like kind of get annoyed by it, really try wearing it for at least a month because your, your body will adapt to it and you'll get used to it. At first, switching from the Vivo Smart 4, the slim design, it was very kind of annoying to wear this watch, but now I got uh, very used to it. And the funny thing is that this is, of course, the smaller edition. This is the Vivo Active 4S, and I'm a pretty big person, a 6'3", around 220 pounds. I like it. I much prefer a slimmer design. Now, I've been getting a lot of questions about the wrist size, about my wrist size, so I actually got some measuring tape and let's find out what my wrist size is because this is some question I kept getting in the previous video, so. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that. So basically my wrist size is about 7.4 inches. So I hope this information helps some people decide whether to get the smaller version, the Vivo Active 4S, or the larger version. Yeah, so I don't know, it's up to you what you want. So speaking about the wristband, the first thing I want to address is the ability to swap this out with a third party wrist strap. Is it possible? Coming from the smaller band size and moving to the Vivo Active 4, I did suffer some weird rash on my, on my wrist and this has been quite annoying. I'm not sure the result of this is from doing rigorous exercise with this watch, having some sweat stay there and then it kind of builds like a bacteria infection. I've tried cleaning the watch many times and scrubbing it down and so far it has been good but it, it's a little concerning that it did come but I haven't had any issues thus far. Just something to be wary of. It can actually be really difficult to find a replacement for this type of wristband. So right now it comes with the default black silicone wristband and I like that, but sometimes I'll actually wanna to switch to a nylon or more fabric kind of woven style, maybe on the ones that you see on Fitbit Charge 3 or the Apple watches. I would really like to have a softer kind of feel on my wrist, not, not always have the silicone. Now don't get me wrong, the silicone is really good. However, there's one thing that's very proprietary with Garmin and is that they actually use, according to this company I actually researched called Archer, which is on amazon.ca. I wanted to buy one of their wrist straps, and but they said, not compatible with Garmin watches. And I was like, what? This is crazy. It says 18 millimeter uh, lugs uh, or wrist strap. Why can't I use their 18 millimeter band? And they apparently said that Garmin uses a slightly bigger version, 18.5 millimeters. What could actually happen if you use a third party wristband is that you might actually have an insecure fit. This is personally my worst nightmare is that you're running and the wrist strap kind of just disconnects from the watch and your watch goes flying and breaks or smashes. Hopefully the Gorilla Glass will protect it. But in any case, using a third party wrist strap is kind of risky. And this is something that I'm a little disappointed with Garmin. One solution to this problem is that you can actually use the inbuilt spring bars. The issue with that, it's really hard to remove it from the actual wristband. And I don't wanna sacrifice this particular silicon band. I wanna be able to reuse it in other times. Overall, I'm a little disappointed with Garmin not being able to integrate with third party wrist straps. My next point is in regards to actually the Vivo Smart 4 again. And one thing I discovered, there is a very good partnership between the Vivo Active 4S and the Vivo Smart 4. And what I mean by that is you can actually pair two watches to your phone, to your Garmin Connect app, and you can have them work in tandem. So for example, 
you can then set this as your main preferred daily uh, tracker. So I'll track your sleep and stuff like that. So the Vivo Active 4S is doing the bulk of the work. But let's say you want to have a more slim design. Let's say you're swimming or doing some really intense activity that is easy to fall down. Say, for example, skateboarding. And you don't want to you don't want to fall down and smash this beautiful watch because it's really expensive. So I think that having two Garmin devices, like the, the slim profile of the Vivo Smart Fork, is still pretty good. So that's why I'm going to be using both of these together in combination so that I can protect this watch in case I fall down in some kind of sports or activity and not have to risk damaging it at all. So the next thing I want to talk about is the battery life. And I have to say that I'm very impressed with the Vivo Active 4S, the smaller version, which probably has a smaller battery. And I was able to get five nights of Pulse Ox tracking. And Pulse Ox uses the red infrared sensor, which is a very bright light, uses a lot more energy power from your little battery. So what you wanna do is if you don't need that Pulse Ox, you can actually disable it and this will extend your battery life to the quoted seven days on the box. But for all night Pulse Ox tracking, you're gonna get roughly eight hours of Pulse Ox tracking versus the four hours on the, let's say, a smaller one like the Vivo Smart 4. And this is actually really good. This is this is including a strength training workout, me using the GPS for one session, lots of notifications on the watch. So I was able to get five nights of Pulse Ox tracking and I was able to use this watch for six days. And six days is pretty dang amazing. And by the way, my backlight, which I basically never actually need to use because this is a always on display and it reflects internal ambient lines that you can actually see, it's only set to 10%. So you, I recommend having it at the lowest possible setting, 10%. The backlight is only helpful at night and 10% is more than sufficient to actually see everything on your screen. So I wanna give a quick update on Pulse Ox or the sleep tracking. So Pulse Ox was the main reason why I switched back to the Vivo Active 4S. And I have to say that given the software updates, it kinda of has improved a little bit. One thing that I'm looking at, one thing I really did notice was that if you are sleeping on your on this side, let's say you're sleeping on your side and you're sleeping above your hand with the actual watch on it, this will significantly reduce your pulse ox, so your blood oxygen saturation will go down maybe below 90%. And this is something that is really unfortunate about this type of kind of tracking versus say tracking on your head or on your finger. It does kind of block the, the blood into your hand, which might give false positives. So, and Garmin does a good job in the app to explain this. The one thing I'm looking at right now these days with, in terms of my pulse ox metrics is the variability. So going from let's say 100% down to 80%. If I see a lot of variability, I notice that I'm actually feeling sleepier. Perhaps I'm having some stop breathing events throughout the night. So for example, I stop breathing, my blood oxygen saturation goes down. And this is something that Fitbit does a good job of. They're not actually showing the actual percentage of the SpO2 metric. What they're showing is variability. They're showing the ups and downs. And this is something that I criticize about Fitbit, but kind of given the inaccuracy of Pulse Ox for Garmin watches, I can see that maybe you're just looking more of the general trend. So you're hoping for like a high percentage throughout the entire night and very little variability. So kudos to Fitbit for kind of making this metric a little more easy for people to understand. And for Garmin, it's a little more difficult to decipher the, the actual information, but hopefully with future updates, they kind of give it more digestible and easier to understand. Now, in terms of the sleep tracking, that's one thing I want to critique. To this day in 2020, they still don't display the sleep metrics on your watch. You have to manually sync all the data to your phone in order for it to compute your sleep, uh, like REM sleep, deep, uh, deep sleep stages, all the different stages of your sleep, and give you your pulse ox information. And I would really, really appreciate if they just offered a widget that would show your sleep information for the previous night. This is something that is apparently coming to the Phoenix series. And I really hope that they bring this to the Vivo Active 4S series too, because the reason why we deserve this feature is that we paid a lot of money for this particular watch. And a lot of watches in this price range offer this feature already, such as the Fitbit competition. So moving on to the next topic is music. And the one thing I want to address from my previous video, and I was very harsh, I was a little, I critiqued too much without my proper research. And this is about the music provider. So what is music provider? Music provider is essentially the ability to switch between different providers. So for example, you can have the music from your watch, you can have it from a particular app like Spotify, or you can have the music app control your phone as a remote control. So there's three different providers. And what I commented in my previous review was that it was very difficult, a very poor experience to switch between or toggle between these different music providers. So for example, let's say one day you want to listen to music on your watch, so internal memory, or between an app, or you want to switch to remote control. And I, and I said in my previous video, you had to go into the settings and then drill down to all the menus to switch, with, switch between it. So my correction is that once you go to the music widget, you can actually long press the bottom button, 
hold it for just a couple seconds. And what happens is that you can actually go into the music provider settings and switch very easily, very quickly between the different music providers. So this is something that I really missed in my first review and I apologize for that. I do take it back and I retract my comments about how poor the experience was. The last item I want to mention about the Vivo Active 4S in terms of a 2020 update is what is missing in 2020. This is a relatively new smartwatch, but even for 2020, there are still some critical features that are lacking. And for me, and I think we all guessed it, it's the voice assistant and the lack of voice replies. To this day in 2020, we definitely expect some kind of voice input and especially having a personal assistant is very handy. One of the main frustrations using this watch is the user experience. For example, every time I wanna set a timer or an alarm, it's a very laborious task. I have to go into the menu, press like a bunch of buttons, kind of configure it properly. It's very, very hard for me to do this really quickly. Whereas on a Wear OS app or many other types of fitness trackers like Fitbit, which now has Alexa Assistant, and hopefully soon the Google Assistant, you could just simply long press and then say command and it'll execute that, you know, set a timer or whatever. So this is something that is really missing in 2020. And I'm really hoping that the next iteration will have some kind of voice assistant. Now, some people might argue that this smartwatch is not a smartwatch, it's a fitness tracker, and it's only for people who are athletes, who run triathlons or whatever, do advanced kind of athletic stuff. I don't do any of these things. I use this as a smartwatch. I really do think it's better than a lot of other smartwatches. And just having a voice assistant and the ability to set replies with your voice so that would be so beneficial and it would help Garmin destroy the competition and have a huge lead in terms of usability and just how awesome this watch is in general. So in conclusion, the two things I really wish is that it would include a voice assistant, some kind of voice input, and a sleep metrics on the actual widget so you don't have to open the phone all the time. You can actually see your sleep metrics on your actual watch. That would be really nice. So hopefully Garmin can bring this in the next iteration of the Vivo Active 5. And I'm still waiting for the Vivo Smart 5. I really hope that they release an update to this slim band because I really like that watch and I would like to update that as well. That's it for this video about the Garmin Vivo Active 4S. If you liked it, definitely hit the like button. It really helps out the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.